Yo, 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 it's your boy Jordy, man. Y'all make sure y'all check me out on the Bootleg Kid Podcast show. Hey, before we start the interview, don't forget to go to imperialextraction.com. Yeah, that's right. And use the promo code bootleg and you're going to get a free, that's right, free, pre-roll. THCA, diamond loaded pre-roll, man. This is the Space Ape. This is the Pink Gelati. Um, use that promo code bootleg. Load these up in the cart. Hit checkout. Use that promo code no purchase necessary. They're just going to send you a free pre-roll. That's what they're going to do, all right? And it's a premium joint, glass tip, stacked, all right? One more time, Imperial Extraction, keyword bootleg. Get one for free. Let's get into the interview. Yo, man, it's the Bootleg Kev Show, Bootleg Kev Podcast. Special guest in here, my guy, Drody. Yo, yo, what's going down? Finally. Yeah, it's been a minute, huh? Welcome, man. Uh, just to say. For people who don't know, you're from H Town, right? Nah, I'm from Freeport, Texas. It's, Where's uh, that? It's like an hour south of uh, Houston, 288 South. Okay, so is that like where's that in uh, coordination to like Bay City or where OT lives? All right, so uh, like in, in that Houston direction, Houston is right here. Freeport's down here, and Bay City's over here. Mm. Like Bay City's an hour away from Freeport. It's a different county and everything. Got it. Yeah. What's it like there? Is like. Mm-hmm. Shit, boring as fuck, man. We got like it's like this much town and then, like this much plants all around it. So everybody, you know, really just go to school and then grow up and fucking go, work go at the work farm. The plants, nah, like oh, plants. plants. Like, yeah, like be a welder, or pipe fitter, or operator, shit like. Is that. there any like uh, products that get bottled or manufactured? In, in uh, your, this in your is town? like this is like big industrial shit. So like we got like Dow and BASF. They make like the chemicals that they send to like Ford or like. Uh, oh, so it's like a plant city. So, it's so like, yeah, they make like chemicals and then you grow up, you go work at the plant, you retire, you get your pension. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Does it die Did you ever work at any of these plants? Hell yeah, yeah. When I when I first graduated, I had my first son on the way, so uh, I had to you know go in there because it's like a cheat code. Really, we blessed at the same time, but also it sucks getting stuck in it. But I mean, I was fifteen. I mean, eighteen just graduated, was making fifteen an hour, so I was pretty good, you know, for for the time. Not bad. Yeah, like a lot of high school kids get out doing minimum wage shit. We were able to just. Go what were you doing? Them. Handling chemicals and shit? Nah, hell no. Nah. When I started, I was a laborer, so like. When the concrete would come poor form for new construction, like all the little spills on the side would like break them with sledgehammers, throw in wheelbarrows and go dump it off or like pick up trash. Or like when they would take the forms off the concrete, we'll right. like pick up all the wood. And so you were like doing shit. all the grunt work. Yeah, like labor, all the bullshit. Yeah. You know, Damn. Picking up trash sometimes. Shout out to Texas, man. It's a huge state. I drove shit. across it twice. It's Damn. It never ends. Yeah, that's the, that's like I used to go to Cali a lot and that's half the drive to Cali is Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you gonna go to Cali a lot? Shit, you know, just scooping up packs, oh. working, trying to make some bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, same reason everybody go to Cali. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long have you been rapping? Uh, dropping shit, man, like two years. About so two you're pretty years. new? Yeah, like I always wanted to rap. I just never took that shit serious. Like I would like fuck around because I had older cousins that rapped. And I just but You're always, pretty like, you're a good, like you're dope. Like you got a great like. Appreciate fucking it, clean flow for somebody who just started rapping. Appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been I've been working on it about two years now, just consistently, you know, trying to make it my priority and you know putting the work in. So I'm excited. So know, what got you kind of like into the rap game? Was it just like like I, I, I want to get to how you met OT because you guys have been working together for a long time. But just like in ter- in terms of like what was the motivating factor to push you over the edge to actually start like dropping stuff and getting in the booth and recording oh man i i would always be getting in trouble where i'm at and uh it's a it's a small area you know so like if you're doing some kind of even a little bit big everybody gonna know so uh just getting in trouble a lot down there i had a, a big case man I almost got locked up for a long time and uh after that you know my lord told me like once we were going through it like once he you know thought i had a chance of beating it he's like if we get off of this like you gotta do something else. Like, well, cause you got how, how many kids? You got three. Three kids. I mean, yeah. so you got you want to, you know, you don't want to be incarcerated <laughs> and have some. Nah, hell yeah, no. Nah. How old your oldest kid? Uh, he just turned ten. Oh, you got a little little human, a little real yeah, man yeah, out here. Grown little man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he a smart ass? Uh, hell yeah, he be talking bad, talking shit. Like he just he like in smart classes, so you know he's just smart and like. Is he is he into shit, like the YouTube you know? channels and all these like TikTokers? Uh, and shit? not too much. Nah, he's, he he like likes to play video games and uh, 
like he reads and shit. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. He just started watching like some YouTube shit, but it'd be like about games and shit. Oh, the gamer thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So talk talk to me. How did you and uh, OT initially link up? Uh, shit. I was you know selling weed to one of his homeboys, and he just was like, "Shit, my homeboy needs some weed," and I pulled up. So it's through weed. It was yeah. It was OT, and then I was already doing music. I just hadn't dropped shit. Like I said, my lawyer had. Just told me, you know, a little bit before that, like, you know, you got to find something else to do. And I told him, I'm like, man, I'm only connected with weed and with music. Like, I know people on only those two things. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to have to start fucking with the music seriously. And not at, not too long after I started trying to take it serious is when I met OT. And uh, just smoking, chilling with him every day, we just working on music. It just, like, made me work harder and faster than seeing him work. You know, he when I met him, he was already a professional. Like, he wasn't famous none, but... I would always tell people, like, he's a professional rapper. Like, he got fucking 10 verses in his head he could spit right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, no, for sure. He's like a rapper. He, rapper yeah, like, he's real. a rapper. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Real. Like, you know, there's rappers, but like, yeah. I would always tell people, like, he's a rapper, rapper. Like, he's for a sure. real rapper. Yeah, and uh, him helping me out, you know, with shit and just seeing him do his shit, I'm like, damn. This fool, a real rapper. Well, you guys got like a pretty dope chemistry. Like, I feel like you guys are like some fucking Snoop and Dre, <laughs> Havoc and Prodigy, you know, some... Yeah. Like Some chameleonaire Paul Wall type shit yeah, got yeah, yeah. you know going on in terms of just like you guys sound so good together on records. Like appreciate it, man. That bow down freestyle is crazy. Yeah, I like that shit. You know what's crazy about that shit, bro? Uh, I didn't know that was a West Coast beat. Really? Ever? I was. Uh, I grew up. You know what I'm saying? I'm from. I'm not from Houston, but like so close to Houston that like I grew up on all the Houston shit. So. Hearing that freestyle, we had, in Houston there's a DJ Screw and Big Pokey freestyle on that beat, and it slowed down like that. So that's so you knew so it from I, that. Yeah, so I thought it was a Big Pokey song, and then not till I went to make the song, the actual freestyle, when I went to download the beat, when I looked up Big Pokey by down instrumental, it didn't pop up. It popped up Ice Cube, and I skipped over. It. I was like, man, where the fuck the Big Pokey one? And then finally, I was like, man, let me listen to this one. I was like, oh shit, it's the same shit. <laughs> yeah, it's this one, but that that one was sped up. West Side Connection, man. Yeah, not spit up, but like it was regular speed. I was it's the so regular used speed, to yeah. hearing the slow down one that I was like, what the fuck? This shit Damn, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But you shout out West, West uh, You gotta listen West to Connection, You gotta listen though, to that sure. album, man. Um West Side Connection. There's some great there's a song yeah. there called Gangsta Killing a Dope Dealer. It's amazing. I gotta I gotta check it out, you know, so I can steal some more beats because they be having some hard ass beats out here, especially like old school West Coast. Oh, the, oh like, for sure. Damn, these hoes go crazy. They just make you want to rap. So when you were growing up in Houston, like what was like cause I feel like I don't wanna cause I'm thinking like let's see, oh five, oh six is probably like the peak. Houston time. The, like in terms of like Mike Jones and yep. and all those guys going crazy. So like what when you were growing up, were you listening to like a lot of that stuff or Hell were you listening yeah. to the newer I mean, stuff? I was listening to like my first, my two first favorite rappers that I remember was 50 Cent and Slim Thug. So it was like a little, because I would always watch BET growing up. Right. And so it was a little bit of like the mainstream shit that I would hear on TV. But most of it was like just shit that my cousins were listening to, my older cousins, because they used to rap too. I remember right. they would be freestyling in their garage when I was like little, I'd be riding my bike down the alley, and I just thought it was cool as fuck. And uh, just people in school, you know, we all just jammed a lot of Houston shit. Cause, Slim Thug is one of the ones for sure. Yeah, shout out Slim Thug, man. He's the first person I really tapped in with like that in Houston. Already yeah. Platinum is a fucking classic. Yeah, for sure. Working with the Neptunes and shit. It's going crazy. crazy. In, independent and shit, you know what I'm saying? Owning yeah. Shit. That's why it was so, I remember like seeing him in like the magazines with all the cars and houses and shit. <laughs> like shit fake. I'm like, what? What is yeah. he doing? No, I remember, I remember that shit being a big deal. I remember hearing like he was one of the only rappers at the time that had their real house on cribs and mm-hmm. had all their real shit. You know, it wasn't like all stage. Crazy. Like it was all his real shit on there. Well, it's crazy too because like... He was a big inspiration to me always. You know, I, like I'm independent right now. I'm still independent and, you know, a lot of people had tried to sign me different deals and type shit and I always ask Slim Thug for advice. Like, man, what's up, man? Shit, at the end of the day, you know, some, you could get... A little, you know, a little upfront good, bag, but it ain't yeah, worth it. Yeah, but like, yeah, he's like, you know, independent, long term, if that's what you want to do is the best Yeah, thing. unless you get off for something that Makes sense, the right terms. Yeah, yeah, like you could get a good deal. I'm not saying every deal is bullshit. Like, shit, I mean, well, d- deals do help people, but uh, just me, man, I don't know. I just can't have somebody telling me, like, do this, do that. Also, like, if you're if you're on a major or you sign a deal, it's a lot harder for you to put out a song like Bow Down on the DSP. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't you're gonna drop be like, we got to clear this shit. I'm like, what? Why? It's music. I wasn't could... even tripping on getting paid on it. Like, when I dropped it, I wasn't making no money on it. Right. It was, uh, you know, it got copyrighted. 
Like, I wasn't. I ain't give a fuck though. Every, you know, everybody telling me, "Nah, you tripping. Put another B. Y'all can make money. This and that." I'm like, "This is what I it's wanted." Exposure. All, and not besides the exposure, it's just like this is to me was hard. You know what I'm saying? Well, to like, me, went, it's like also like if back in the day, like you said, like you found the that record through Big Pokey, and it's like the mixtape era is like lost. Like people aren't spazzing out on known beats anymore. Yeah. When they, I feel like we it's what's missing. Damn, for real. Like I motherfuckers, love beats. I don't know if you've heard like. No, I know you do that a lot. You do yeah, that a lot. Got, like you did twenty fours. You know, yeah. yeah. By the way, did, did you get copyrighted on the Ti shit? I know it slowed down. Oh, uh, I haven't because I changed it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, I wasn't it, tripping when I dropped it. Either. It was the same mindset. Like if I don't get paid, even though I spent all this money on getting you know the video done and all the right. people on it, if I don't get you know what I'm saying no money, I ain't give a fuck. I just want to do it because you guys to. Uh, dropped a MB Riders remake. What yep. was it? Which was a pretty it girl. It was pretty girl, yeah. And then it got taken down, but then you guys redid it with with magic, yep. And shot the video in Phoenix, yep. It's not out yet, right? Nah, it was supposed to drop, but I'm not sure what's going on. Because that's gonna come out through Nasty Boy shit. Records. Yeah. So um, the song originally it was my song. I dropped it with OT. And I remember uh, I told y'all when you played it for me, I was like, y'all, y'all gonna get hit for that. You told me, yeah. So the thing about that uh, was not. It's not magic. It was MC it's Magic. Upstairs Records. It's the lady MC, in Texas. Yeah, MC Magic hit me up. Her name's like, Joe Man, Lopez. Sorry about that. You know, yeah. I ain't had nothing to do with that. Yeah. But before all that, uh, some dude, I guess he was in NB Riders. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know the members' names. The only one Los I know is MC Magic. But Landed. somebody it's, that was not NB Riders hit me up on IG when I first dropped it. Was he like, mad about it? Yeah, talking shit like, that's fucked up. Y'all ain't breaking me off, this and that. Who and is my it? My mom, like, bro, I'm not even making money off this hoe. It got copyrighted. I'm not it's making Zigzag and Los. Or the other guy. It was probably Zigzag who hit you up. I'm not even sure. Somebody was definitely up talking shit on Instagram. Happy. And then I got an email like, hey, you know, uh, we need you to take this record down. I said, fuck it. I'm not going to do shit till, you know, they pull it down. Fuck yeah. it. I'm just not. Nah, Magic's not a it. hater. Magic's amazing. And yeah. Magic's the kind of guy who, like, he's in a position where he could, like, like he'd rather help you and, like. Yeah. Now, nah, then when it did get taken down, that's when Magic hit me up. It was like, hey, you know, I heard about what happened. Sorry about that. I had nothing to do with that. He's like, how about I give you a new beat and I'm going to re sing the hook for you so it won't be a sample no more? I was like, bet. So then when he sent it to me, he was like, hey, I went ahead and put a verse on there too. I was like, all right, bet. And then he was like, man, a little bit later, once I send him my shit and OT shit back, he's like, man, what if I drop it on my, you know, on my platform because it's a, the original came out in 2004, so this will be like a 20, 20 year years. anniversary type shit. And I was like, shit, fuck it, I'm not tripping. Did you guys realize, I mean, were you being Mexican? But I feel like Texas Mexicans are different, man. Uh, but I grew up in Phoenix, so MC Magic Tuss is like, you know, it's our guy, you like know. Like Slim Thug. <laughs> but I'm saying like, uh, I know he came out at the show in Tempe. Yeah, that show was live, man. How, I, it was did, going crazy. I was going to say, do you guys like understand how popping like Magic was? Like, and uh, is. Like, I felt he's like, doing yeah, like 60 like, dates a year to yeah, this like, day. Yeah, like, nah, I remember being little and like, I was kind of young at the time to where like, I wasn't, you know, really fucking with the hoes yet when that shit was out. But I remember like my older cousins and aunts and brothers jamming that shit. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like I would hear it everywhere and right. that, that sound, you know what I'm saying? You can't mistake it for nothing else. For sure. So he a legend for sure. And uh yeah, just meeting him and being able to do the song with him and him fucking with me, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? It's gotta be coming out if you guys shot a fucking video for no, it. No, it's coming out for sure. I just I think it's some shit going on with like O T since O T's on it now and it's like an official release, you know, they gotta do paperwork. I know, yeah, and OT's when I dropped got, it, it was just got his YouTube album coming. Shit. Yeah, like it wasn't nothing, no paperwork. No, I know how it is. They're probably gonna have to wait for the O T album to drop. Probably, so, I didn't even think about that. That might be what it is. Something. I just know that. Because right, he's going to put OT as a primary artist, and then that's going to bump OT's last release off of his main thing. It's just, oh, I know, okay. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, some shit. But the video's hard. The song is hard. MC Magic went crazy. I went crazy. You know, OT went crazy. And I'm excited for everybody to hear it, because people still message me about that shit damn near every day. Like, what happened to Pretty Girl? Either asking about the old one, the original, me and OT dropped. Or when is the new one coming out? Right. Either way, they asking about that shit though. Are you guys uh? Oh, well, like you said, like I mean, dude, when you're on a record, like when you first heard Johnny Dang, and you, <clears throat> and you, because you got for people who don't know how radio works, unfortunately for Paul Wall, his verse is always getting cut off if it's getting played in the mix. Damn. Because the third verse never gets played. That sucks. So your verse is always getting played <laughs> on the radio. If yeah. it's in the mix, if because anytime someone's playing songs in the mix, like uh, but on the turntables, yeah, yeah, it's always it two off. verses and mix out. But yeah. did you like when you first cut that record? Like when y'all heard it? Like did you have? I mean, it's a hard record, but did you have any idea it would have like the commercial success? Nah, hell no. Nah. It was um, it was just another song. Like I said, when me and Ot first linked up, 
uh, all we did would I would go to his apartment, we'd go to his balcony, and we'd play beats and smoke and just write. And uh, it was just another song, you know, that we had fucking like in the cut. We got more songs unreleased than we got released, and it was just another one of the songs on there. And we had actually shot the video and everything, me and OT. And then when the label heard it, they fucked with it. They was like, hold on to this. We're going to put on an album. Or we're gonna was do Paul Wall on it yet? Nah, it no. was just me and OT. They okay. were like, don't drop it yet. You know, we like the song. We want to put some money behind it. So OT was like, bet he didn't drop it. And then a little bit later, they are like, we're going to put Key Glock on it. It was in the studio when they told him that. I was like, hell yeah, it's going to be live. He's like, they want me to take you off, though. I was like, shit, I'm not tripping. Key, Key Glock, you know what I mean? That whole Fuck go that. crazy. Yeah, but like you know, what I'm saying I ain't no, no, to no, hold no. Key Glock's a homie, but I'm saying like, yeah, I didn't want to hold it back though. Right. I was like, shit, hell yeah, like that I actually happens signed all to the a time label because I was with OT before he got signed with the right. label, so, so I already you knew, could like, be like, yo, I get it, and yeah, we got like, thirty songs together. If they take, yeah, me like him one. being uh him being signed to a label, I already knew, you know, what I'm saying like you know they gonna have some control over shit too, and I was like, I'm not tripping, I'm not trying to, you know, and he just got signed with them, like I don't want to fuck your relationship right. up, being like, nah, fuck that, this or that. I'm like, go ahead and uh. OT though was like nah fuck that I'm gonna tell them they could add them but they gotta keep you on there I'm like I told them I right, but you know what I'm saying at the end of the day I'm not tripping bro like shit do your thing and then I never heard nothing back after that and then a little bit later uh, once we got uh, beat on managing OT that's whenever they said Paul Wall was gonna be on it I was like more excited about that cause you know I grew up listening to Paul Wall I was like hell yeah that's live as fuck but I still didn't think like, oh, this whole finna go crazy. The only thing I remember thinking, cause the first video before we shot it, OT knew somebody that knew Johnny Dang's brother. He like, we could get Johnny Dang's brother in the video. I was like, hell nah. If it's not Johnny Dang, yeah, we gotta get. <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck that. We gotta so, get actual Johnny Dang yeah. in the video. So whenever they said Paul Wall, was you know, be you could get him. At yeah, that that's point. the first thing I thought was I like, know. oh, we could get Johnny Dang in this hoe now for real. Cause the original video we wanted to have him in there, we just didn't know him. So, so you guys shot a whole video prior without yeah. Johnny. John, did you guys have any sort of Asian in it at all? Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I told OT, I was like, we can't just put his brother in there. <laughs> like, like, yo, that's, that's fucking, that's Derek James. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck, though. But yeah, I was like, nah. So yeah, man, I was excited about just having Johnny Dang in there for real and meeting Paul Wall. Because like I said, I fuck with Paul Wall. Paul Wall's like the best, dude. Yeah, he's Such cool nice as guy. fuck. And uh, yeah, so then that happened and then... When it dropped, you know what I'm saying? Shit, the label just pushed the fuck out there. They had that hell everywhere. Yeah, I remember I, when it got on Rap Caviar, I was like, oh shit, this is about to go yeah. up. Yeah, yep, that shit too. They, you know, they did. That's why I said having labels cool too. I just, you know what I'm saying? Right now, I just trying to keep doing my own thing. Yeah. For you, uh, all the songs you guys have unreleased, you guys got to do some sort of like a fucking dog pound type project or something. It's just you and OT. Yeah, everybody be asking about that, man. But a lot of the shit we got is kind of old. So I'd rather just drop it as singles. And if we do do a project, I'd rather uh, have like a all new shit. You know what I'm saying? So what's all, where's the old shit go? That's is, what I'm saying. All the old shit, here? like just drop, just like. Oh, yeah, I got a song. There, yeah, like I'm dropping a song with OT hopefully this month. As soon as the video's done, I'm dropping it. That's another thing with the label. Like I have been in talks with some with some record companies. And, you know, like I had a song coming up. And they're like, oh, well, don't you can't drop it yet. We want to do this, do that. And that already kind of made me not sign a deal. Like, you know what? I'm going to just keep As, So you've thing. had a lot of uh, people reaching out trying to sign you? Uh, not a lot, but a few, a yeah. Few. Yeah. And did just, you get close at all? Yeah, hey, yeah, like I said, like I was in talks with one of them. And, I, you know, they were asking me what was next. This and that. I'm going to do this song. He's like, well, wait till you know, we do the record deal. And then we want to put some money behind it and this and that. And I was like, man, I got to drop something this month. They was trying to drop it not till next month. So that was like while they were trying to get me to sign. So I was just like, man, I don't like this. How'd you get involved? Like, because, you know, you obviously rap a lot about moving packs. It's about part of your brand is weed. Yeah. Um, shout out to the Drody pack. Is that a thing <laughs> that people can buy in Texas? Nah, so Drody, bro, it was uh, really me and my cousin in 2015 had started a, like a smoker brand. Like we were doing rolling trays and uh, jars and shit. It was called Jetpack. And then we found out somebody had the name Jetpack. So we changed it to Doty. I was about to say. You were Doty, the Jetpack guys? Nah, so that's the thing. We heard of another <laughs> brand called Jetpack. We're like, oh, we got to change it. But so the next name was Doty because when I was young, we called the Dro Doty. But then nobody called it that for the longest. So we changed it to Doty. We're like, yeah, we're going to bring that shit back. And then on my way to work one time, uh, that Drake and Future album came out in 2015. It was like, I fell in love with the Dirty. And I was like, damn, they're going to think we copied Drake now. So I was like, well, we got to change it again. And then I just came came up with Dro D. Because my name is, you know, starts with an R. So I just threw the R in there. It's Dro. It just made sense. It sounded tight. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to try it. I made a little logo. And then they just stuck. Everybody, you know, who's catchy. Well, they always say, like, if you're in Texas, are they passing off? 
like light depths as indoor out there? Man, it tastes, bro, it's fucked up. A lot of people just smoke whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, people, like, I feel like... Like, if, back then, I would I always like once say you leave out, exotic. Like, California, yeah. you can pass a lot of shit off as, like, za or exotic. Yeah. I mean, even in California, bro, I've been to some dispensaries. It says top shelf shit, oh, some yeah, yeah. booths. No, like, no, no, the dispensaries are bullshit. Yeah, like, All I feel this- like everywhere, it's a lot of people that ain't really educated on weed and... uh Especially when like the cool ass bags came out, people were getting cool ass bags and just putting and, bullshit. Yeah, in. and people that were buying them were thinking, yeah, it's this or like I remember having like you know some fucking shit from the bay when gelato was first new and like yeah, it's gelato. You know, it's four hundred zip. They're like, damn, my boy had gelato for two hundred. It's I'm not like, gelato. Yeah, I'm like, all right, go ahead. Bro. Yeah, they got like, a they got a bag. They're just not educated though. You know what I'm saying? For a what's while, the thing is like you could buy in. I remember we were in Michigan and we went to the liquor store and they had a bunch of bootleg fucking bags for weed. Yeah, yeah. Hell so you yeah, can buy like fake shop. cookies bags. And that's the shit I don't get because the motherfuckers that are buying these bags from the people that sell them weed, they go to the corner store to get papers and they see the same bag they just bought weed in, but they assume all oh, those are fake and mine is real. I'm like. It's all bullshit. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. The weed I game. still like my weed. I be having like when I when I be you know what I'm saying getting my weed. Like I don't get this crazy bag and shit. Like my shit just still be in sandwich bags. Yeah, it's 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 funny too because like people fucking they don't even care about how shit smokes anymore. Yeah, they just look at the bag and like I want this one, this one. It's like or they'll see some shit in the sandwich bag and be like, oh no, nah. uh, yeah, they don't even look at it. They just think like, oh, it ain't one of the exotics. Yeah, and then the new shit is like those like fucking white nuggets, bro. That's the next big scam, you know. It's always terrible something, bro. It's that shit. Weed yeah, I'm like, I always tell people if bro, you have good why weed, why are you smoking that? Yeah, is what if I you have know. good weed, why are you gonna do all that? Why are you gonna to cover it? it? Yeah, it's like how high do you need to get? Yeah, it's like I said, a lot of people are just not educated, so a lot of people see that and be like, oh shit, it's gonna get you high as fuck, and I'm sure it does get you high as fuck, but ain't nothing. What better. are you smoking though? Like what? Are yeah, you ain't in your nothing lungs? better than just some good, just good weed, just weed by itself. Fuck all that extra shit. What's your favorite strain? I fuck with strain? hash and shit too. Oh, hash. Well, you guys are very much with yeah, the Puffco yeah. guys. Hey, shout out Puffco, bro. Shout These out. guys take care of you. Puffco been blessing the whole the whole team, man. Shout this out like a little doing dabber, that. Shout right? out Slapwoods too. We can't shout out Slapwoods on the Blue Lake Head podcast. We have to shout out the King Palms. Jesus, oh, yeah, you're fucking yeah, up my yeah, bag yeah, over my here, bad, man. dog. What are we doing here? <laughs> shout out to King Palm. Cut. Tobacco free. Hey, we got to give a shout out, man, before we keep going with this interview. Much love to the homies at my bookie. Don't forget. It's NBA season right now, man. We already got through that NFL season. If you want to win some money, make sure you go to mybookie.ag. Sign up with that promo code bootleg. Get that first deposit bonus up to $1,000 right now. We can get in on some of this NBA action. Um, The MVP race is wide open right now. I kind of like Shea Gillis-Alexander as the sleeper. You know, I think he's second favorite. I think he's going to win over Jokic, all right? Plus, you can get in on the Rookie of the Year. You can get in on your daily games. And they got the full-service casino going down. MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code BOOTLEG right now. Get in on the action. Let's make some money, all right? Go do that. Also want to give a shout-out to the homies over at Blue Chew. Mm, man, does Blue Chew work, they ask? Of course. What is Blue Chew, you ask? It is the same active ingredient. As Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. The best part about Blue Chew is it gets delivered right to your doorstep discreetly. And nothing involves you leaving your house and having to go to a doctor, sit down in the waiting room. So you can go talk to some strange old man about your problems that you have. Maybe with erectile dysfunction, maybe stress, maybe performance. Maybe you're tired of fucking your wife. Can you get tired of fucking your wife? I mean, I don't know. I'm not tired of fucking my wife, but maybe out there you're tired of fucking your wife. And you need a little extra motivation to get that dick hard. Well, Blue Chew comes huh, in handy, my boy. So go to Blue Chew right now, and um, they're going to give you a month supply for free. That's right, a month supply for free at BlueChew.com. The keyword, though, when you check out to get that month supply, help out the podcast, use the keyword bootleg. That's BlueChew.com, keyword bootleg. Get a month supply free of Blue Chew. Let's get back to the interview and such. Uh, no, uh, that's like a dabber, right? Yeah. So this this is a e rig they call it. It's, you know what a rig is, right? Yeah, yeah, Torch yeah. and shit. So this is just well, electronic. I, hit, I think I, hit, I only hit this with you guys. Yeah. And it's it's very uh, it's very it's just convenient, bro. Fuck, you know what I mean? With the torch and all yeah, that the shit. Yeah, the torch, the nail, waiting for it to the, cool off, exactly. and burning too so hot. So all this is like it's that cool. process. It's handled in that little thing. Yeah, and I travel a lot, so it's just way better. Yeah, because this guy dabs and like he's got it's like a science project. Yeah, he puts yeah. a timer. 
No, nah, and that's a that's a that's a whole thing too. Dabbing like that is cool. You know, there's a lot of people say that you know this this shit sucks and the other way is better. And it's cool. I feel what they're saying, but like for me, traveling around doing all this shit, this is the best way for me. And not only that, uh, and when, nobody when, wants to pull out a fucking torch and a nail <laughs> everywhere. All that dude. extra shit. But not only that, for people that just started off, man, because for me, I, I first tried dabs in like 2015, maybe 14, but. I remember it was like, you know, they were heating the shit up and I took it, it was too hot, burned the shit on my yep. throat. I said, fuck dabs. I ain't get back on it till years later. This is like a good way to get into it because you can do low temp and it won't fucking I did kill it. your throat. The first time I ever dabbed was with Action And it Bronson, tastes good, yeah. And he took advantage of me. This was early on. This was It's because people didn't know. That's the thing. Nobody yeah. really knew. We were early. all dabbing hot ass dabs. Fucking... Bro, that shit... It was terrible, bro. Dude, but and I was I, that second was just the learning process. Been. You know what I'm saying? And like it's a little bit later, like oh, cool it off for a minute, and then later they came out with little temperature readers and shit. Mm-hmm. And then now you're doing this, it goes. Yeah, to there's the always a new thing in weed. It's like what's the new trend? And now it's like those fucking snowballs, which are so trash. bro. They don't even I smell see people normal. Like opening them up and they're like wet. Yeah, I'm like bro, it's just moon rocks re re remarketed, bro. Mm. Yeah, fuck that That's shit. A bad look. Are you, uh, I mean, you're and sprayed obviously- weed. There's a lot of sprayed weed going out. People love it because it smells like fucking cereal or it smells so good yeah, and it but- tastes good. But it's like, bro, that's not natural. So you're saying, I didn't know that. So people Hell are spraying yeah. scent on the packs. Hell yeah. So and when people you sniff love it, it. It's, you'll open a pack and be like, damn, this just smells just like candy or this just smells just like fruit. Because it's a fucking. Wow. And this spray, but like I said, a lot of people ain't educated about weed, so they're like, oh, my weed tastes better than your shit. This shit's better. I'm like, bro, you're smoking vape juice on your weed. Vape juice. But they'll be like, oh, it's terpenes, this and that. I'm like, man, fuck all that. That's when someone starts t- trying to explain to me why this shit is not bullshit, it just made me feel like it's bullshit. What's your favorite strain? Man, right now, I feel like everything's fucking candy, but I've been on the hunt for some good-ass classic gelato with that, like, funky throw-up-ass smell, like some 2016 gelato. That's what I want right now. I ain't had that shit in a minute. Everything just been candy. And then I got this shit. It's some OG Kush. You know, it's hard to find good OGs nowadays, too. Yeah, OG Kush is the... And that shit, you know, I like OGs. Yeah, it's funny, because, like... uh... What about you? What you be fucking with? You like that candy shit? So typically, I'm an OG Kush guy. Yeah, I think that uh, I like like I'm not like I'm I'm a weed kind of sore in the terms of like I move packs a lot in my life. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet shit. You I'm, fucking Cali. Uh, um, I feel like everybody out here sell weed or has so weed. And I know that like the candies are what sells. Like cause, yeah, because because fucking motherfuckers who sell weed, they want it. They want they, it has to have the nose. Yeah, has to and have, have the look. To have the, frosty. The look. Yeah, it's got to be frosty. Um. I'm just like, yo, I'm just trying, if, if I'm smoking, I'm just trying to get high. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. give a fuck about. So I definitely, I love OG Kush. But yeah, that's why I tell people OG is like, like the liquor, Khalifa Kush. Bro. Like, like I love like Wiz's Khalifa Kush. I want to try the real Khalifa Kush. I never uh, had. Burner, burner cereal milk, the cookie cereal milk shit is cool. The Gary Payton shit is cool. I had some fire from the cookie store like a year or two ago. It was called Quicksand. It was like that gelato I like. You know who's got a dope, uh, dope uh, strain is Dave East. Uh, his his he's he's got a a a, 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 a dope ass. I think it's called East Co. It's like a Kush. It's good. Damn, I think that's the dude that we saw in New York, bro. We was outside smoking last week when we was in New York by that studio where Tupac got shot. Yeah, and uh, Five Year Foreign was having a album release. Oh, Davies was probably there. Tall dude. Yeah, he pulled up in a matte blue Escalade, bro. That's that hoe was nasty. I didn't know who he was or nothing. I just dope remember when that hoe pulled up. Everybody was just staring you, at that. How crazy? Like, I mean, I, fuck? That bitch I don't know how, how often you guys have been going to New York, but isn't it crazy when you go to New York how, how open they are with weed now? Yeah, yeah. I heard it used to be used Bro, to be insanely strict. Weed. Yeah, like they would Now you can go to the jail. corner store and buy a fucking eighth. Bro, we were walking around Times Square shooting a video smoking weed and cops are right you there You can looking. buy shrooms from the bodega. Yep. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it is. New yep. York's cool though, man. I fuck with New York. Do you think they're ever going to legalize... Uh, Recreational in Texas? Mm, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of hope they don't. Cause I used to come with Cali, take Cali trips before it was recreational. It was way better. After 2018, when that shit changed, that shit kind of lame. You know what I'm saying? Well, the week gets worse. Just like now, like you could get pulled over and you know you can't smoke and drive no more. But let me ask you this though: if you get if you get pulled over and the car smells like weed, they, they're yanking you out in Texas, right? Yeah, they're yanking you out, but they're not gonna give you a DUI, like in you know legal states. They're gonna take you to jail though, right? Uh, if you have weed in the gun, yeah. A oh, weed and a gun? Yeah, like every time I get pulled out, I what go to jail because I always have both. I don't know. I've always had a boat. 
But uh, if it's just weed, I would guess it depends on the officer if they want to be cool. Yo, Texas. Oh, all, he's in Austin. Austin, the cops are actually. Austin a lot don't give cooler. a fuck. I ain't gonna lie to that. I'm not. In, so I'm. I've it, seen some videos of Austin police fucking fools up, but I, every time I'm in Austin, the cops are the coolest motherfuckers. They be chilling. <laughs> they don't so, give a fuck. So that's the thing. Houston is decriminalized, but where I stay, like it sounds like it's the same shit, bro. It's a oh, whole it's different world in Houston? in Houston. Yeah, but where I stay, no. It's like it's only an hour away, but it's a whole different world, bro. Like we're like, small towns. Is it towns, like rednecked like, up? Like they hang you for some weed. Like take yeah, take you to jail and like make it seem like you're a dangerous. Did you grow up doing redneck stuff like OT? Nah, hell nah. So my my in the valley, I would like do some country shit because my grandpa uh, had a farm out there. But I ain't gonna lie, I hated that. Have shit. Have you met his cousin Jordan? Yeah, that motherfucker's He's country. He's a gnarly fuck. ass fool, bro. That fool's the most. Shout country. out Jordan, bro. He that country is fuck. I'm like, this fool needs his own fucking podcast. He looks like fucking dog. Rambo or something. He's like Rambo for sure. Yeah. This fool had like 19 guns in the in his truck. <laughs> He's bumping Mike Jones. Damn, that's funny as fuck, dog. Yeah, I, it, Texas is different, man. Where we at? It's it's just special, bro. Like I, I always, you know, try to leave and go to places, but I be missing it when I'm gone. I fuck with Texas. The only thing that fucks with me is it's just so flat. Like there's no like yeah. landscape to enjoy. Like here, you might leave and there's just a mountain, bro. Or, I remember like Texas is just flat. I remember getting like uh, new cars and like trying to get like I always try to get like the top trim. I remember getting the platinum Escalade had like all kind of features and did shit. Did you have like, a Chrysler three hundred? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm swinging. Did you have a Charger? No, I never no. had a Charger. Did you have a Dodge Magnum? Nope. Oh, I gotta ask. You know? No, nope. I had a three hundred on swingers though. Shout to the three hundred. Those but, are all like the uh, entry level weed dealer cars. You know, back in the day. <laughs> get the oh, Dodge Magnum. Oh, my first car. Uh, when I was first bought a car, it was a a Buick. I feel like every weed man had a Buick. Or Bro, a the Cadillac. Chrysler three hundred came and fucked the game up because it looked like a Bentley. And it was cheap. And it was cheap. It was as affordable. Fuck. Like I could get that. Like damn, what's this Bentley looking? <laughs> they got thing? this hoe in the used car. And then car people like. would actually put the Bentley grill on the Chrysler. Oh, I remember that the Rolls Royce grills on them hoes. Do you remember when it was on? Um, what was that race car game? Midnight Club. Midnight oh, Club my Dub shit. Edition. Yeah, I remember And they had that. the Chrysler on the front. Then they had the Slim Thug, uh, like a boss on there. They had yeah, that, that Paul Wall fire. sitting sideways on there, bro. That shit was live as fuck. They don't make games like that no more. Hell no. Nah, they need to make that, that shit. shit. They need to make better race car games, and I need another snowboard game like SSX back in the day. I never played that one. It's probably past your, before your time. Yeah, I'm old. I'm, I'm old for real. I'm, I'm 36. I'm oh, old shit, too. I'm, well, you got a 10-year-old. What are you, like 27? 28. Yeah. Yeah. I had my son, though, early. Like, I had got, got my girl pregnant when I was 17. Me, too. And that, So, I got my girl pregnant when I was 17. I had my kid when I was 18. Yeah, me, too. Yeah. Yep. So. I had to get out and start working straight out of high school. So, yeah. So, you and I had a kid at the same exact yeah, time. So, I, I have always, an 18-year-old right now. So, when you're my age, you'll have an 18-year-old. Yeah, it's going to be tight. I'll be young still. Yeah, I got a grown ass man living in my house now. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What? But you still young, us so I could do shit together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take him to shows and shit. I mean, you met him. He was at yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the OT show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's just tight, man. Yeah. Um. What? What? First of all, what's the craziest? Because you guys just embarked on, I guess the two parts of a tour. Because it was kind of like a, you guys kind of split the tour up. Yeah, it was like not considered. And then you guys a tour went back to other cities, part. where and doubled up the venue size. Yep. Because even mm-hmm. in L.A., you guys were at Echoplex, I think, or the Echo, upgraded. and then you came back and did the Novo. Yeah, it got upgraded. What's the craziest tour story you got so far? Tour story? Like any wild groupies, or any any uh, just, even even dude groupies? Fucking damn. They're the worst. <laughs> yeah. The nah, lurkers? It'd be, it'd be some weird motherfuckers, bro, fucking just waiting and shit, or like, some people would like find out where we were staying in the hotels and shit, and they'll just be outside waiting. Hey, no, nah, I didn't want to say that. Little, I thought wait, it's the first thing I thought of. I didn't want to say that. Little shit. Paul Wall? Nah. <laughs> What's a little Paul Wall? Explain. <laughs> Ew, no, I can't be blessed. Was man. it a midget? Yeah. Was it a midget that looked like Paul Wall? Kind of. He don't really even look like Paul Wall to me. But bro. he was like but a midget with a grill? Him. Yeah. You know him? No. But he's a midget with a, with a grill? Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> said he was Paul's son? They call him Lil Paul Wall. Where's he at? Uh, I don't know. He follows a lot of cities, bro. So he'd weird. be following y'all around? He did for a few days, right? Does his feet touch the pedals in the car? Someone driving him around? I didn't think about that. I don't think... I don't, can he drive? Yeah. Oh, shit. It was weird, though, man, because I remember he was like... I don't know how the fuck... Somehow he got backstage, and, you know, they had to tell him to leave. He and probably snuck in. They tell him... <laughs> he went right under the house. Yeah. That kid <laughs> but I remember he... Uh, 
they, they kicked him out from the backstage and then we chilling, you know, doing the meeting greet. Next thing we see, he in the meeting greet line. I'm like, bro, we just kicked see, you off backstage. Like, let, it's going to be awkward. You're going to walk up here like, hey, don't let it's me, me again. Don't let me hang out with little Paul Wall. I'm <laughs> the dude, y'all just kicked me out. I'm getting little Paul Wall fucking hammered. Yeah, I don't know, bro. And then, don't, no, I need a midget, homie, <laughs> so just to get funny. him fucked up No, it got, freak people it got, out. It got funnier, though. So he was there. We did the show. On that show, it was the one where OT pulled up the dude that looked like him that it went viral. Oh, I remember like, that. The yeah. OT looking like we were calling him Peter Griffin. So when we leaving the show, I don't know how the fuck him and Lil Paul were on the perform? side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm like, what the fuck, OT? Like, Jerry bro? Are about to shoot a fucking yeah. uh, parody video. Fucking yeah. Bro, that shit was funny than the bitch, dog. But where's nah, been the you guys? Hey, prov- it was another car. What was we at? Who was with me in that car? We split up two different cars, but somebody was chasing yes, us. Bro, we was, we was, was in a full like chase. A it girl? was definitely, nah, it or was like, rob you? nah, yeah, it was definitely on some gangster shit because after we left, all the fans were like gathers around us trying to take pictures and shit. And once we left, this car was already at the corner waiting on us. So we uh, took off and it was for sure a stolo. It was, it was in Cali. It was in Cali. It was, it was for uh, sure a stolo though because the light was out. Y'all could just tell like, oh, something, they just hit, you know, that's a car they hit licks and they was following us. Like at first we wasn't sure, and then we started doing shit, and nah, and then we started speeding up, breaking laws. They I was gonna say like when you when you're in the hitting that hoe, like the, like California, like Mexican politics are very complicated, and it yeah. feels like Texas, y'all are a lot more chill. Yeah, we don't be giving a fuck. Like, but out here it's like very like there's like the South Siders and the North Siders. Yeah, I heard man, and uh, it's very like. You know, yeah. it's a thing. It's a part of the culture. It is what it is. It's unfortunate. It's prison shit that bleeds out yeah, to the streets. Yeah, no, I've and- heard, man. I had a homeboy uh, that I went to school with, man, that I was super close with that was out from out here, man, from all his people were from Riverside. So shout out my boy Israel, man. Uh, and he would always explain to us, like, you know, when he first moved there, like, he just acted way different. It was, like, kind of weird and shit because the way, like, you know, just the way it was in Cali and, like, we had to keep saying, like, nah, it's not like that over here, bro. Like, we all fuck with each other. You know what I'm saying? It took him a while, but, like, after a while, you know, kind of got used to it but when he first moved over there he was like man y'all are weird over here like what the fuck <laughs> like, like y'all, y'all ain't real Mexicans like you guys are all hanging out together <laughs> <Yeah>. and shit <laughs> not being kind of racist like. yeah <laughs> nah and it was hard for me cause bro I've been selling weed I was selling weed in high school and uh I fucked with everybody bro the yeah. Mexicans the blacks the whites right. the poor the rich the dudes the hoes uh you know what I'm saying everybody and uh my Mexican homeboys were always like, man, I don't know why you fuck with them. And then my black homeboys would be like, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't trying to do nothing, this or that. I'm like, bro, I don't be mixing, you know what I'm saying? My money with, I was never in the game, so I don't mix my money with no, you know what I'm saying? Right. Beef shit, like, bro, I'm trying to make some bread. Fuck all that beef and shit. Yeah, so, it's, it's, I don't know. In Cali, if I lived in Cali, you know, they probably would have been tripping on that in high school. It's just definitely different. Like, I, you, you just notice, like, even the way y'all talk, like, it's just different. Like, it's a different culture. It's, it's yeah. like that with everybody, too. I like it, though. That's why I like. Like, when I'm out here, it's, like, different. I fuck with it. all my homeboys I got out here. And then when I'm in New York, it's totally different than both of them. And I fuck with my homeboys I got out there. You Not know many saying? Mexicans in New York, though. Nah, it's, like, Dominicans Puerto and Ricans, Puerto Ricans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, different different Hispanics. But yeah, I lived on the East Coast. I was in Florida for a little bit. And, you know, I'm from AZ, so... I mean, all my kids are Mexican. All my kids are... Me- both my kids are Mexican. And my son's mom is Mexican. My Damn. wife is Mexican. Different people. Yeah, Florida's like that too. But Florida had the worst fucking Mexican food I ever had. Oh no, so that's what I was gonna say about Florida. Just, it's like just, New York. There's a, a lot of Hispanic, joke. but not a lot of Mexicans. Great Cuban food. Yeah, terrible Cubans and other fucking shit, Mexican but food. Mexican like you ask somebody from Florida, where's a Mexican restaurant, and they'll literally be like, yeah, there's a Taco Bell like a mile that way. And yeah. they'll be like, with that being said, Texas Mexican food very overrated. Huh? Yeah. Hold on, let me see. Let me think. It's, it's Cali Overrated You're saying It's not that good Correct I was in Houston You're tripping bro Okay first of all Let me say something When I went out there And fucking hunted boars With fucking OT <laughs> I forgot you did that shit Bro we, what the fuck That's we, random You was You was where I'm from In B County That's crazy what the Is that fuck? where he Well I don't want to say Where he stays But yeah I was, I was all over That fucking place Yeah We were trying to get Mexican food In the middle of the night And not even that late Like 1130 What day was it what day of the week was it? It was like a... F- I don't even know. It doesn't matter. So I it call, does I call the homegirl from, from the radio station out there. Shout out to Ashley. And I say, hey, look, I'm looking for some fucking good Mexican food. And she's like, where is the name of this place? And it's like a chain. And I look, and that shit's got like two and a half stars on Yelp. What? Nah, you talking terrible. about Houston? In Houston. By, oh, I was by nah. George Bush Airport. 
Oh, you way on the north side. That ain't that much. Southeast it got all the Mexican horrible. food. Southeast Houston, man, they got all the Mexican food. You but cannot walk north side does have some taco shit truck in too, LA. Though. North side does have. Uh, you could throw. I could throw a brick right now, and I hit a taco truck out here. They ain't that good. And they got though. the pastor, and they're shaving that shit up. Come on, bro. Listen, <laughs> if you decide to uh, come on this journey with me to certain areas of the world in the next few days, I will introduce you to the best Mexican food you've ever had in your life. It's all Man, about. I don't know, dog. We'll I, I'll check it out for sure because I like to eat. I'll be eating like a motherfucker, but it's different, bro. Texas Mexican food go crazy. Y'all ain't Y'all, even got fajitas over here. I remember I was. What do you uh, mean we don't have fajitas? I was in oh. fucking uh, North Cali. This was 2016, 2017. You can't tell me that your 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 look. Let me tell your you barometer of what's good Mexican food is if a place has fajitas or not. This isn't fucking. <laughs> no, Chili's. look, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> I was in North <laughs> Cali. Chili's bro. got fucking fajitas. What are we talking? I, I was about? at. Uh, I remember I was on my way, or I had left some shit called. I don't know if you heard of Petaluma in the North Cali. No. Bro, we went to this restaurant. And I'm not uh, talking about Northern I ordered fajitas. I can't claim they brought it. me onions and peppers, and I'm like digging, like, where's the meat hey. at? They was like, I'm you order fajitas. Southern, I'm, I'm like, yeah, where the fajitas? No, no, She's like, that's Northern fajitas. California's I was like, thing. what? They got great. The they brought me is, vegetables, bro. No, we're talking about fajitas. Southern Cali. All right, Cali. LA, I don't know. San Diego. Southern Cali. Phoenix, Tucson. I don't know. Everywhere I go down here, they got carne asada or like pastor, bistec, yeah, pastor. They don't really see fajita though, bro. Because you got to go to to the sit down place with a waiter to get fajitas. Okay, and, and I'd like that. to point out that a fajita is very, uh, it's like what my dad orders, and he's an old white guy. Nah, bro. Hey, see, hey, that's what hey, I'm they saying. got y'all, fajitas? Y'all got the wrong, y'all, y'all eat the wrong kind, that's why. No, what do you mean it's fajitas? It comes out in a skillet that's sizzling. Very vain thing to order at a restaurant. You want everyone to look at you when you order fajitas. It's a loud thing to bring out. I don't know why they do that shit loud. I thought it was the meat, but I figured out that it's just, they put water under well, it. I don't and, know why they do that. And it's on a fucking uh, a Yeah, fucking that's skillet. some extra shit. Nah. In Texas, man, I don't know. It's different, bro. Like, I want my fajitas. Like, I've loud. ordered fajitas. I, want quiet fajitas. I don't know. I don't you give want a quiet fuck. Fajitas? I don't give a damn. Long them hoes nah, smacking. I, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, look, like, I've been, so this is another thing about fajitas. This, it, it gets complicated because I've been in other places not from where I'm from. They use different meats and call it fajita. Like, some places call it fajita by the way it's seasoned and shit. Like, for me, fajita is the I feel like if steak. I'm in Texas, it's a piece I'm of meat. Eat it's a part beef. of the cow, you know give what I'm saying? Give me a fucking steak. Oh yeah, our steaks are crazy too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give me some fucking some. Do y'all got salt grass out here? I don't even know. Don't think so. I think you guys got the fucking beef shit on lock. Bro, salt grass if, go crazy. If if I want a uh, steak, I would like to go to Texas for it. Yep, steak forty eight in Houston. Steak forty eight. Yeah, steak forty eight's good. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Houston. Houston's. I love Houston. It's just flat. Yeah. Hey, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our good folks at Odd Socks. That's right. We love Odd Socks, man. This is our family right here. Naruto, uh, Street Fighter. I can't wait because they're about to send us the new Office Odd Socks. Um, they just did the Office uh, collab for the TV show The Office, so that's just fire. I can't wait till we get those in to show y'all. You can check them out, oddsocksofficial.com. They got the draws, Dr. Pepper underwear, Hot Cheetos, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody whose dick smells like Hot Cheetos. Fucking take a shower. With that being said, oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code bootleg right now. Save 20% off at checkout. Also, want to give a shout out to our family at King Palm. Now, we've been smoking on these King Palms for almost a year now, man. Let me tell you, bro. It kind of changed the way I look at smoking because this is a natural tobacco-free leaf. It's organic, baby. What's great about it is it's got the terpenes that uh, is going to get you right with the flavors. Like these right here. This is the peach pineapple. I do love the peach pineapple. I also love the apple, the regular apple. I also love the lemon haze. Uh, I also love, give me a, give me a, oh, give me the banana creams right there. Look, these are them boys right here. Woo, the banana creams. They're fire, all right? So this was dope. King Palm, whatever city you're in, man, pull up to the smoke shop. They're going to have King Palms for you. 7-Eleven, they're going to have King Palms for you. Or you could just use the promo code bootleg uh, right now at kingpalm.com, and you're going to get 50% off. Half off, 50% off. And they got cool devices. Hand me a cool device uh, over here. Uh, more down, down. There's better devices. Kingpalm.com, promo code bootleg, 50% off whatever's on the website. For example, cool device. This is an electronic grinder, so you could grind up your, your flour. You know what I'm saying? They got all kinds of shit. Kingpalm.com, promo code bootleg. And uh, let's get back to the interview. 
Oh, that's what I was talking about earlier, bro. I remember I would get cars with all these extra features, and I always was like, well, this shit's useless. Then I started traveling, and I was like, oh, that's what it means, like, cruise control adapted when you're going down hills and shit. Mm. Like, oh, yeah, so you didn't yeah, like, realize I never, why there was cruise I'm control. I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? I thought it was, like, just some extra shit. They're like, uh, you know, downhill adaptive. You're like, we don't have hills like, here. I didn't think that. I just thought, like, bro, it sounded like some bullshit. Like, bro, it works like my other cruise control, my last car, you know what I'm saying? And then I started traveling, and then when I get the rentals, like, now I try to get the ones that have all that shit, because I'm like, that shit helps. Yo, I tell that you a story. Useful. So when Parking I w- on hills and shit, too. So I ain't I've never been, used a parking brake in Texas. He would know, because I had to drive his pickup truck in Texas, so I'm an idiot. So we get to the <laughs> airport, and I've been thinking about buying a Tesla. I've been thinking about it. Damn. So they're like, hey, what kind of car do you want to rent? And I was like, well, what are my options? And they were like, I think we could have got like a, I don't know, like a Chevy Malibu or a Mercedes electric car. Oh, yeah. The ones are clean. And I, and it's the same price. So me, I'm like, oh, give me the Mercedes electric car. I want to try an electric car for the week. If there's a place you don't ever want to have an electric car, it's Texas. No, nah, for so. Bro, we got stranded. <laughs> it's just far as fuck. No, so I had to drive his truck. But we got stranded when we left. We we parked it at a Whole Foods parking lot. When we we got out of there about nine thirty in the morning. We slept in the fucking car. Damn. Fuck it. I'll never fuck an EV. Oh, I might get yeah. the Cybertruck. I ain't gonna lie. Cybertruck. Oh, that would look crazy. I want one too. That shit yeah, does look tight. But like you, if you, it, 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 I live in LA, so I feel like we're pussy enough where you can have an EV here and they make it easy for you. Texas, yeah, they got they this shit everywhere fuck. out here. Yep. Texas is like. 9.2 miles away for a charging station. I'm like, what are we doing? We got 14% left? <laughs> yeah, it, nah. it was a bad look. So Texas, what do you, Texas ain't on that wave yet, man. Are you working on that uh, album, or are you just dropping singles? Uh, Man, so I was working on the album, but then I was like, nah, I changed my mind, because I was like, bro, I don't, I don't listen to albums. I don't remember the last time I just sat and listened to a whole album. Put a fucking album out. So, and then another thing about that... uh. I want to like wait till I got my own like you know what I'm saying big song before I do an album. I need to have some buzzing, you know what I'm saying? You got some fucking records. Yeah, but I need like like all my shit. I just drop it and then I'll post it when you I drop it. You drop it on like DistroKid or like yeah, DistroKid and then on YouTube. But when I drop it, I I like post it when I drop it and then that's it. Like never speak of it again. That's not so, smart. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So I want to I want to like uh, drop a song and like. Market that hoe and get that hoe out there Listen, before man, I start dropping the If you are going to put out music, you have to be willing to promote it nonstop for Yeah, yeah, month. I know. That's why I'm like, I can't drop you a, can't be a so album f- if I'm not even promoting my singles. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's look. why I need to start. I'm going to start dropping singles and marketing them. You know, Bro, and all it up. is is like setting up your phone. Yeah. Like, it's no excuse. You can't be that guy. Don't be that guy. I Don't know, be the guy that drops chilling, and then never, we never hear about it ever again. Yeah, I just drop it and then I just like you see this asshole thing. behind a uh, screen here. He just put a whole EP out and put no promotional material behind it. That's what I'm saying. So, That's what I've he's been so doing. full of himself to think that people are just gonna, you know, Google him and his 300 monthly listeners, and they're just gonna be like, "Oh my god, I, I discovered this new EP." Yeah, nah, I don't have to promote nah. it. That's the thing that I'll be like saying, like. But you have like two million monthly listeners. Yeah, but that's another thing though with with the music. Like I got rappers I fuck with that I won't even know they dropped something. They're famous as fuck. I won't even know till like weeks or months later. I'm like, damn, like that's how hard it is to get people to know you dropped something. So who are your favorite rappers all time? All like give me your like top damn, five. Top five. Don't gotta be the best. Just your favorite. For sure, Fifty Cent, Slim Thug, still the first original two. Uh, I like uh, Future a lot. His shit's hard to me. Um, uh, man, I fuck with. I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with a lot of people. Shit, I'm trying to think the most, the most. Um, Who was uh, saying Zero is as good as Tupac last night on the stream? Uh, Ot. Oh, yeah, he's a wild boy for that. <laughs> Damn, that's three. Young Dolph, I fuck with Young Dolph, Dolph. a lot. I like his music a lot. Um, Number five. Who would number five be? Uh, who else I'd be jamming? Did I say future already? You said future. Uh, what else I'd be jamming? One more. And it's like, I don't know, bro. MC they Magic. always be riding with me. I'd be jamming everything, bro. But uh, You'd be listening to country too? Some some of it. Some some of it is hard. Some of it, though. It's like, could it be good? Nah, that fool OT put me on that Ch- Tyler Childress fool. That fool's hard as fuck. I gotta check it out. He's I'm not sure rapping about doing cocaine and not overdosing and shit. <laughs> I said, "What the That's fuck?" Crazy shit. I'm still thinking. Future. 
Oh, Lil Wayne for sure. I Lil Wayne, there you go. That's five. five. Yeah, Lil Shout Wayne's to Weezy. hard as fuck. Yeah. So more singles are on the way for you. Yeah, hey, yeah. Promote them, please. Yeah, I am, bro. I'm going to start taking this shit more serious, you know what I'm saying? Traveling, doing these shows really made me see, too. Like, damn, people really fuck with me out here. Is, like, has, what's been the coolest music. place you've been able to... Because you got... I mean, OT's done so many different, like, halftime shows, rodeos. Yeah. Did he do the rodeo? Not yet. No. That, I'm sure that's soon, though. Yeah. yeah because that Houston rodeo is like the fucking Super Bowl, right? For it's that. perfect for OT. He's fucking cowboy. 100%. <laughs> But like, where's, where's what's been the header, coolest right? place you've been able to perform so far? Um, coolest place. We did a lowrider show. That shit was live. Fucking shitload of badass cars everywhere. We done a couple of weed events. It was cool for me too. You know, just because you know Network. coming from there. Yeah. yeah and, you know what I'm saying? Like shit, I used to doing like doing shows at them. Now it's like damn, that's tight. We did a show for Zoomies. That's hard too. Do you get a Private gift card? Event? Nah, hell nah. <laughs> well, he's got a clothing line at Zoomies now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, do you get that stuff for free? Uh, not from Zoomies. Uh, I've gotten some for free from uh, like OT and I sure hope Fee. so. Yeah, and Greg, like the people that yeah that are involved with it on the on OT side. Or are you gonna be on the new album, The uh, Texas Technician? Yeah, yeah. I got. I'm on one of the songs on there. I've heard the album. It's really good. Yep. Really good album, man. Yep. Well, listen. Uh, new singles on the way. Yep. Catch this guy somewhere. Anywhere on the road, sitting near you, eating fajitas. Yeah, yeah, man. You should go uh, buy some merch too on uh, jardyworld.com. Um, yeah, speaking of IG. merch, still don't have a shirt. <laughs> Damn, I should have brought some. Nah, that's what you say every time. <laughs> See, bro, I need a team, bro. I really, do. I'm, I need to look at getting a deal, bro. Well, listen, man, I'd love a shirt. I can't fucking I wear it on the podcast. This shit. I got too much shit going on. I need some help. Go buy some merch. <laughs> Yeah, for I'm real. gonna buy. You know what? I'm gonna buy some merch. I'm gonna have it's to buy. It's on the it. website. Uh, what, what's the what's what's the realistic turnaround time? What's your? You don't even have a team. Do you got a shipping team that can at least send it out in a, yeah, a nice yeah. amount of time? Yeah, yeah, or my, am I gonna wait six nah, months for uh, the team? My girl ships them out. She it's does that shit. Yeah, like a, the next day or two. Okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna just buy a shirt. That's what I'm saying. Like, good, when I gotta do it, I'll be I'll fucking buy it, up. I'll buy it. But <laughs> good. No, nah, uh, I got you though. For no, sure. no, no. I'm just I'm gonna buy it. All right, if you buy one, I'll tell her. Tell me what name is on there. I'll send you two or three of them. Okay. And you, uh, your shirts Maybe are better two. quality than the OT shirts that I bought. The first OT merch shirts I bought offline. Oh, those? yeah. Nah, hell no. Nah. That's why I, I like to do. That's another thing you about remember, doing you know my what I'm own talking shit, about? bro. Bro, I remember I, fucking, I, I hit OT. I yeah. said, bro, I don't know what this bullshit is. Y'all just sent me in the mail. <laughs> I bought the sleeveless shirt and I bought the other T-shirt. It was all discolored. And, nah, bro. That's, oh. why, that's why I like having control of my shit because I, I know what blanks I like. I know what style I like of like art and shit. I, I know the new merch print. has been upgraded, by the way. The new merch has been upgraded, right? Yeah. Yes, it has been upgraded. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys hear that from fans? Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah. Shout out to OT, man. Uh, shout out to Jody. Appreciate you. We're about yeah, to have him yeah. do a freestyle, too. So that's a different YouTube video. Go check that out. Sure. Uh, how, where can people follow you online? Uh, underscore D R O D I. Can underscore. you get it? Can you get just at no, Jody? I've been trying, bro. This fucking. That girl. underscore is throwing people off. Yes, I know. I hate it. This girl that has the just Jody by herself, uh, she don't want to sell it to me. She says she waited until I get what more she famous. What did she do? Nothing. She just she's she, a loser. She just nah. She's not a loser, but like she don't do nothing. She just like posts, she just you know, just somewhere. herself, like just regular How much life did you offer? type shit. Uh, I think the last time was like a thousand. She said no. She's been. Well, it started off like before I was even doing the music. I was just trying to buy it, and it was like fifty dollars, a hundred, two hundred. Oh, 500. she's holding out. Yeah, and then once I started doing music, she heard me on the radio in the bay. She's, she's like, oh, don't she worry. She lives in the bay. And I'm gonna wait. Like, she was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm wait till you get more famous. I'm gonna hit you for ten. She yeah, she really told me that. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. Yo, you, <laughs> just let me give you a little. Do you own your trademark for your name? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think it's different though. Like, so there's two things. If you get a class 33 trademark, it's for advertising and promotional rights over that name, Jody. Uh -huh. You can have your trademark lawyer send a cease and desist letter to Instagram, and they'll take that account name from her. Oh, that's fire! Hold on, there. Write that down <laughs> before this interview gets out. <laughs> so it's a class 33 trademark. Right. So you need to own your trademark in the entertainment field, and then on top of that. I'll connect you with a lawyer. It'll cost you twelve hundred all in for all the trademarks you need. But then what happens is your trademark lawyer then they will send a cease and desist letter to Instagram to Facebook, and Facebook will take the, that account name. Like man, person. it's fucking up my business, man. They people can't find me. Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, just try typing in Jordy. It should pop up. Go just follow. Look through it. See if you find me on there. 
Go follow Drody, all right, man? A bunch <laughs> of new music out. Hopefully yeah, this MC yeah. Magic song comes out sooner than later. Yeah, I got a song coming out this month, too, uh, featuring OT. That's crazy, too. It's one of my one of my favorites uh, that I've done recently, so I'm excited for everybody to hear that. There it is, man. Shout out to uh, the Astros. And I'm going to market that. So you got an Astro shirt on. It's Cheaters. Yep. This is uh, my boy. It's uh, Slump. Slump Boys, man. Shout out Slump Boys. You're a baseball fan? Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Who I don't watch no sports. None? I never have, never, never, wow. never really gave a fuck. You ever watch snowboarding or X Games or anything? Mm-mm. No? What do you watch? I don't watch TV. I used to watch Wrestling? like uh, movies sometimes, like BT movies, like Paid in Full. It's my favorite movie. Paid in Full's a classic. Shout out to Cameron. Yeah, Luke. Prison Song. Prison Song. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yo, you know Drody. What prison Song is? Of course. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> it's a wild movie to mention. I yeah. appreciate you uh, for checking in, brother. Yeah, hey, yeah, for sure. Appreciate you having Drody! me. Drody! Yeah. Fire. Want to shout out to Hardeen, man. Hey, don't forget, this interview was brought to you by Hardeen. And when you're hitting Las Vegas, you got to stop off at Hardeen. Tell the Uber driver, the taxi driver, take me to Hardeen. They're going to take you. They're going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go visit them at uh, HardeenLasVegas.com. Go follow them, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. And when you go and check out the most craziest premium selection of cannabis in the world, um, make sure I saw you tell them I sent you. They're going to get you situated. Salute to Hardeen. Thank you for watching.